Hey guys, uh, if you know anything about me, I like to look at stats and data when I try to make my decisions about my career. And if you haven't heard of levels.fyi, basically it is a site where developers report their salaries and benefits and things like that. I've used it a couple times in my career. And they're releasing their end of year pay report for 2020. So lots of cool information in here. It's going to more or less showcase sort of who's paying what, where. Um, so, you know, what cities are paying the highest, what what roles are paying the most. And for those of you who know at some of these larger tech companies, you know, there's multiple tiers, not just like junior dev, senior dev. It just keeps going. And, you know, one company may have a title called senior engineer and another may have a title called software development engineer two, for instance. And, you know, you may be confused as to where those line up. So the, this site helps you look at that as well to make sure that you're getting, um, you know, fairly compensated or compensated for what, you know, the roles are. So I think it's a pretty cool thing to look at. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look. <laughs> Hey guys, before we jump into the content, I'd like to do a shameless little plug for my latest course, the 100 Angular Challenge, where we build upwards of 100 components, services, directives, pipes, and much more. You're going to learn Angular not through, you know, hours of video, although there's 12 and a half hours currently and it's growing, but by building 100 different things. Really going to build a component library by the end of this project and learn Angular in the process. Lots of fun. Got 4.6 stars. People are really liking it. Anyhow, check it out in the link below. All right, before we look at that, I just want to make a note about like how some of these salaries are broken down. So like you see here, we have Google, Facebook, and Microsoft for, you know, various things here. And also this isn't just purely like engineers. I mean, that's the most of it, but you can see we have data scientists, technical program managers, business analysts, really things that are going to be more in, in there, but it's also like human resources and marketing. So you can kind of go and compare and contrast. So as you go and you start working at some of these large, um, uh, organizations and tech companies, oftentimes what you'll start to see is, um, you know, overlapping titles, as I sort of mentioned, and this helps sort of line it up so you can kind of see where, you know, where the things fall. But another thing to consider is that your compensation isn't purely like base salary. It's not like, you know, Hey, this is your salary. And you just, you know, you make in this case, $187,000 a year for an L3, which is a entry level for Google. And, and what you'll what you'll see is that about 130 of that is actually is actually um, your salary, and then you get stock a year, and then you get a bonus on top of that. And so um, something to consider because depending on where you go, your total comp may be higher or lower. But you know if most of your stock, for instance, will take a couple of years to vest. Usually, usually it's about four years at most organizations where. Um, you might ha be getting $40,000 in stock here, but maybe you only get 25% of vesting. So that first year, if you leave, you would only get 10,000 of that stock. And the second year, you'd get 50% of those two years and so on and so forth. So something to keep in mind, if you really are one of those people that, you know, you take, you take on a role that you may not want to be there that long, or you're a little, you're like, oh, you know, I'm going to Facebook, but I really want to go to Google and I'll do that in a year <laughs> or something, right? Um, but end of year pay report. So um, something to keep in mind is there's another uh, U.S. gender gap uh, pay gap report, which I haven't actually looked at this. So this doesn't have a ton of data. It's 6,000 um, data points with uh, binary gender information. So I say here, um, one in eight submitted by women. Okay. So you can kind of see a pay gap here by level as you go in. Um, but uh, anyhow, uh, the link will be here. And uh, I didn't really look at this. So I can't talk about it too much. But um, this one has over 1,200 cities. The levels that FYI has been around since 2017. Um, and um, they last year, their data set was 25,000. This year, about 50,000. So quite a bit going on there. And um, if you are here and you want to help them out, and you want to help out your fellow dev to go add your salary, benefits, and leveling to spread the word, um, you know, go ahead and do that. So... I like that this is probably my favorite part of here is just sort of the breakdown as you can go through. Um, you know, most of these are going to be in California, right? 
And so you can kind of see the names T3, IC1, L1, L3. These are all what they're categorizing as entry level engineers. So the higher off the bat type of guys. Um, and if you go and click on some of these, you can see the, the breakdown as you go in, right? So like this is higher, but you're getting like their bonus here is very low. But, you know, as you go up, you'll start to see that usually what ends up happening. Uh, is there no L4 at Robinhood? But usually what ends up happening is um, as your salary goes up, like you've more than doubled your salary here, your stock typically goes up as well with most organizations. Um, it's not necessarily a, con a consecutive just straight to the roof, right? Um, stock goes up as as you go and get salaries that are <laughs> redonkulous. Uh, <laughs> you know, as we'll see as we go in engineer two all the way up to principal engineer, those things start being more stock heavy than just a straight up base salary, which can work to your favor. If you really are a believer in an organization where you might get $200,000 in stock that a year, two years down the road might be worth 500,000, which is, you know, pretty astounding stuff. If you're a big believer in the organization and you think, it, you know, if you go and work at Robin hood and they give you, you know, they give you at L one $55,000 in stock a year. And you say, great. Because I think when this vests in four years, this fifty-five thousand might actually be a hundred thousand. So your two hundred fifty thousand dollars or your two hundred thousand dollars in stock might actually be worth four hundred thousand by the time it's fully vest. And you know, sort of the golden handcuffs type of thing. Um, not a bad situation to be in. But Lyft, I, I don't even know what Roblox is. Is it a? Is this is a gaming company. Okay, yeah, I think I have heard this. I didn't know. Still wouldn't work there. Sorry, man. <laughs> I have no interest in game companies. But this is pretty cool. So um, about what you can expect. So um, new grads are little no industry experience. Develop and maintain low to moderately complex components working on team. Typically receives guidance from more experienced team members. So you can kind of see what's expected for this entry level. Engineer 2. This is where I fall into. Um and uh, again, most of these are in California, but again, this is ByteDance, I think owns uh, TikTok. So there's about a, you know, anywhere from a 50 to a hundred thousand, you know, 50, I'd say about a 50 to $75,000 jump from entry level to here, uh, looking over some of these on the higher end, about 60. Yeah. But um, two to five years experience, develop and own moderate to complex components, possibly lead a small team or project, ability to mentor engineers, provide technical guidance, code reviews, design, deliver on small projects, and then impact is typically at the immediate team scope. At many companies, this is considered a career level, as in you spend the rest of your career operating in this level without being pushed out for not being promoted. So this is kind of like your mid to senior, senior level dev at a typical organization. Um, Next one, sort of senior engineer. So basically what, what this is saying right here is that um, if you only ever wanted to be a developer and you didn't really want to go to more of a, a senior or tech level, tech lead level, this is kind of where you're at. And, um, you know, it's one of those items where they're, they're okay with you being there. They want qualified devs being at that level. I think sometimes when you want to move up and I, I've had buddies who worked at large um, organizations that maybe weren't in the sort of not fall into the tech category where they've had their financial, like, Hey, you have to go into management. If you're not trying to move forward, this isn't that. So senior engineer three starting to get into, um, you know, some, that's the next year. Now you can kind of see there's quite a big jump here about a hundred and fifty on some of the high ones and about a hundred thousand and you know, about $150,000 jump between there and there, but you're at five plus years experience. Um, usually less than 30% are at this level or above expect to lead to own complex technical initiatives, begin setting the vision and future direction of the team impact um, across multiple teams related or goal shifts towards more design rather than implementation. So you're probably doing less actual code as a senior engineer here, but the idea is that you're probably more of a tech lead type type of thing. Um, and the staff engineer for, um, usually you might hear them as a principal engineer, um, but that's their next category here. But, uh, you know, Stripe, ByteDance, uh, my, my current employer. Um, and then there's not too much data here for principal engineer, but you can kind of see that it, this, once you start getting up into these categories, like it's, you're, 
you know, the jumps, each one of these jumps gets bigger every time you go, right? So you go like 75, 100, you know, 200, like 300,000, kind of, kind of crazy. But, you know, you're looking at 10 plus years experience here. And, you know, this would probably be at like almost like a director level. And this would probably be at like a VP level, a lot of organizations and, you know, less than 3%. So um, as you progress in your career, it's going to be harder. But top pay by location, <laughs> top U.S. cities uh, for the tech companies, median, San Francisco Bay Area, not too surprising. Seattle, Washington, not too surprising. New York, not too surprising. L.A., not too surprising. If I was to make a suggestion for a lot of you, um, I would look at these bottom three cities here. Uh, Austin, Portland, um, Oregon, and Denver. So uh, maybe not Portland, not as many uh, tech jobs, but Austin and Texas. This would be the areas I'd be looking at if I was looking to relocate. So Texas, no no state income tax. Uh, Denver is still a little bit lower, but it's slowly becoming sort of a tech hub. Uh, Austin already a tech hub, and Dallas growing in that area as well. Uh, the reason I say that is that um, you'll probably have a better rate of return early on in your career. Once you move to some of these areas like this, where maybe you're coming in as a, you know, as an engineer two or a senior engineer three, then the cost of living increase is going to affect you as much. Um, you can see that U.S. cities are generally paying a little bit higher, um, but it's also a higher cost of living, right? So uh, U.K. I, you guys complain to me all the time <laughs> about U.K. dev salaries, but 133,000 ain't that bad. Uh, um, Israel. Apparently has a good uh, dev team there. I've worked with a couple uh, companies in Israel. So uh, for those of you who are like trying to figure out, hey, how can I learn more and how can I interview better? There's actually a whole bunch of lists, a whole bunch of things here on the list. Um, who's still hiring, how to set up, you know, they have some services here. If you want to get some help negotiating, um, you know, you can book a session here and, and see what you can do. Um, if you want to throw some money at it, more data about comparing company benefits and so on and so forth. And, uh, yeah, uh, pretty cool site. I've, uh, I've been a fan of theirs for a while and, uh, I always like basing my, my own judgments off of data and having an idea. And, you know, when you are, especially when you're negotiating some of your first big salaries, you don't really know what, you don't know, right? So like education is power, knowledge is power, right? So when you can go and look at this and see if like, oh, that is a good deal or, oh, that, you know, maybe I can ask some questions. So, well, you know, this is what I'm seeing out there and other organizations, but I always like this cool stuff. Um, check it out, include a link in the description. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, share all that good stuff. And if you'd like any of my courses, there are links in the description below. You can help me out. And uh, I got those pups out there. You see those pups? They're all angry because they're laying at the door because they're making noise while I was trying to record. So I give them the boot. But uh, I, need to, I need to buy some dog food for them. So buy them courses. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. All that good stuff so I can see what questions you have. Maybe I'll do a video about it in the future. And take a look at some of my courses. They'll be in the description below. See you next time.